hot pot intoxication is sinking in right now. It's a little bit like being drunk. We're in a contained room with burning fire, so we're actually running on oxygen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Beijing episode of Fung Bros Food. We're here with the Beijing plug, Dizao. What up, what up? We've eaten a lot of food on this trip, but what we haven't showed you is hot pot. A lot of people, they don't really associate hot pot with Beijing. The Beijing hot pot is a very iconic type of hot pot because of the pot that's in it. It's a bronze pot. This is actually my favorite style of hot pot. Old statement. I, 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 did, I always say that. I feel like a lot of people come and just have a duck or two, which is great. I guess the duck is like the basic entry, right? So then you gotta get the Beijing style hot pot. Okay. Say, I've experienced every type of Beijing cuisine. It looks like we're about to step into a Chinese movie or the based in history, Forbidden Kingdom, Beijing hot pot in Let's Beijing. Go. Do it basically like a Dairy Queen Frosty. Yeah, they gotta they do it the plate. Frosty. They flip the plate and they show you, look, this, the, the meat is fresh. Because if the meat is fresh, it's gonna stick to the plate. Stick to Those it. are the smallest jiaozi dumplings I've ever seen. Yeah. I like, so the skewer that it's on, it's not your average skewer. I love the quality because I actually see them clipping off some of the charred pieces yeah. that are gonna get too burnt. Where would you say, is this like a $3 size? $2. Dollar size dollar? Dollar. And it's actually a very family friendly spot. This is the Beijing style broth mix. So basically it's just water at its base. There's nothing else. However, there is a sliced white part of a Chinese leek, jiu tai, goji berries, nori sheets, aka edible seaweed, sliced ginger, and dried shrimp. <laughs> These cuts look different than America for sure. What you have is actually like combustion kind of technology here, right? The source of the fire is actually like a alcohol base. The heat is rising up. There's a hole right here, right, where the uh, the heat escapes from. So it's pulling in oxygen from below and it's ex combustion up top. We have arrived here at the authentic Lao Beijing hot pot. Look at the sauces, guys. Normally there's a gigantic sauce bar. This simply just has one bowl of ma jiang. Uh, let's do like a pinch. That sauce is ready to go. You don't need anything else. You know, I know you don't like to use these, but can you explain to me what these are? Oh yeah, leek sauce right here. And then we got a fermented tofu sauce. Almost like a ma tofu. Yeah, I think it's just straight up salt. All right, Daniel, I need you to break down the six different meats that we are looking at. I'll start with these three, because this is kind of like their, uh, their signature hand cut lamb. This is called a yang shang nao. It actually translates to the brain. It's not the brain, this is the meat around the spine. Is it because it looks like a brain? It looks like a brain, yeah. Yo, all right. Dude, I noticed that we, that probably nobody in the States has seen a little hat style hot pot before. Yeah. We just dip it in a few times, right? We just dip it a few times. Just like throw it. We were in there for like about, what, like 12 seconds? Yeah, 12 seconds. Lamb shoulder. I'm so excited, guys. Oh, it tastes like almost like a melted yang rou chuan in my mouth. Give that a five. All right, a five. Try the salad real quick. So this is a uh, lao hu tai, literally meaning a uh, tiger salad. Onions, cucumbers, and chili. This is good. We have a yang rou chuan break to the three musketeers. <laughs> One for all. All for what? All, all for lamb. <laughs> that is incredible. Amazing, man. You rarely ever get skewers this fatty. This is the first thing I've eaten on this trip that actually completely obliterates what we have available in 626, even. Wow. What means that? So this is called a huang guan dao, part of the leg. Lamb leg. Oh my goodness. This is good enough. You don't want to overcook lamb. Fresh, okay. fresh. It is like shabu shabu in the fact that you kind of wish it yourself until it cooks. You don't leave don't things in there. there. I mean, that was fattier. This one's leaner. You know what I love about the style, Daniel, and you pointed out earlier, because you're eating what you're cooking. We have different people in and out at arriving at different times. They're still gonna be able to enjoy just as much. Do you think that making it individual, is that more of a modern thing? This is more of actually a pure. Right, 
the royals always had access to their own pockets. Yeah. So we're eating like three royal rich guys from back in the day. Is this the same one? This is another part of the lake. I can see because there's a deeper red yeah. that turns into a lighter pink where this was one color all the way through. A different part of the lake. You know how the word shabu shabu comes from shabu shabu? It's like whooshing your meat. Is there a, a Chinese equivalent? Yeah, shuan. Shuan, shuan. Right, right. That sauce is so perfect. Mm. Daniel, we are at the last of the lamb. Yeah. This is the lamb belly. It's a frozen piece of meat that gets sliced. Lamb belly. Swanny, swan, swanny, swan. Once it's gray, it's good. Oh, man. Mm. I do appreciate about the frozen lamb. It really allowed me to get a lot of mahjong surface area. What is this? Freshly fried chili. Dude, oh, this man. looks boom. No mahjong. Straight chili oil on this baby. Oh, that's a really clean hot. Wow, it's really fresh. That's a hot sauce unlike any other. Plum drink in a bottle that looks like a plum. Fatty lamb. lamb. You see me, I'm trying to shoot B-roll while eating at the same time. Oh my gosh. This is tastier than the, uh, the lamb milk. That tastes like a smoked salmon. Mm. I don't even know how many parts of the lamb we ate, including the jar. What was your favorite piece? Lamb shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. The spine, the meat near the spine. It's like I it's agree. A, it's a perfect blend of like uh, fat and lean, right? I think those who, obviously the premium lamb cuts were competing for number one. But you know, I really enjoyed all of them. Even the one that was like, kind of like your classic frozen blander one. Yeah. It was still cool. All right, while we wait, shall we partake nice. some of the sides? Side nice. dishes. Classic thousand year old egg. Is that garlic on top? That's ginger. Oh, it's ginger. Yo, Andy, this might be new. That's the same sauce that dad makes when we eat crab. Oh. It's vinegar and ginger. Yeah. And that is so such a familiar flavor to us, but such an unfamiliar dish. We have a pile of what looks to be actually tofu mashed up for a minute, and it's also got uh, sesame. Ma tofu. Not good. Uh, there's literally still the soybean in there. It kind of tastes like a hummus slash baba ganoush. Oh, that would taste good on some like like on a guac. That got on a guac when you saw these getting made, you were like, yo, those are fire. These are fire. And then when they came, you rang the alarm, you said, stop. The one I'm holding is fried, that was baked. In general, it's called a shawbi, right? But in Beijing, this is called a full shawbi. And you eat it only with hot pot. <laughs> oh, man. It unleashed it. Wow. I'm trying to pick one. To be honest, I wouldn't say they're super different. I actually prefer the baked ones. Nigga, we had this in uh, Shanghai. Mmm. Those leaves break down so quickly. Purely straight chlorophyll in that. Now we're switching the beef section. Hey, the beef section is not the biggest section this time. <laughs> Usually, you know, when you're in the States, they're gonna have more variety. No, you're gonna get like four beefs in one lamb. Yeah, beef in a hot pot is like, and yeah, you know. What part of the beef is this? Everybody, Everybody, I just came from America two weeks ago. Yeah. I don't like the beef. The top lamb here is better than this beef, but this is ranking above some of the lamb for me. All right, you guys, we have cleared through all the meat. What are we left with? We have frozen tofu, okay. Is there a reason why it's frozen? You think it's better? When it gets frozen, it gets porous. Oh, what is it? This is a squid meatball, a lamb meatball, and a shrimp. One of each, sir. Here, guys, David's favorite tripe. Oh, my goodness. When I was uh, shooting around the restaurant, one of the servers, he held this out to me and was like, shoot that. We can kind of treat it like a piece of meat. Yeah. Wait until it kind of gets hard. We got a little squiggly. Here we go. A lamb tripe. This is definitely the, the gamier part of the lamb. Yeah. Right? It tastes really lamb like. Tripe is about as gamey as I'd like to get, but I enjoy beef tripe. That was some of the better tripe I've had. I'm not gonna lie. I may have to wash it down, you guys. David, you're not a tripe beast. So who's done? It's porous. So what happens when it's porous, it's actually gonna soak up all this chili oil that I just dipped it in. So this is gonna be stupid hot. Mm. I think the balls are ready. They're floating to the top. A shrimp ball? It was cool, but that ain't the place to get shrimp. No, probably shrimp by itself is better off. Next up, we got the squid ball. By all means, these are fresh fish and shrimp balls, okay? So they are high quality. Mm. Beijing is 120 miles away from water, so it is landlocked. So that is my theory for why the shrimp ball would not be the number one choice in Beijing. I thought that squid ball was really delicious. It had great flavor. A lamb ball. A lamb ball is why these balls exist in the first place. The lamb ball. Wow. Oh, that lamb ball is good. 
Yo, I gotta say, this is the best meal that I've had in Beijing. And I don't know if that's a commentary on where we normally have been eating. KFC. <laughs> Burger King. The skin of a turnip. Pretty inoffensive for how it looks. No. Skin of a turnip, when you look at that, you're gonna think that it's probably fruity though. I'm just gonna go have to say it's not sweet, but it's not bad. Look at these miniature gels. Design a cookie better, there you go. It's a lamb gel. Yo, that's crazy. This is probably a third of the size of an actual dumpling. Hand make this, man. You think they hire a person with like small hands to make this? Maybe when the guy's getting hired or the girl's getting hired, they like show their hands and like- Show your hands. You're gonna be making the mini dumplings. And for me, hot pot intoxication is sinking in right now. It's a little bit like being drunk. Let's just say that you feel under the influence of something. <laughs> We're in a contained room with burning fire, so we're actually running out of oxygen slightly. There's a lot of CO2 in the air. Daniel, we are actually down to our last three dishes. What are we looking at? The first veggie we're gonna have. Seaweed, there you go. This is gonna flavor the broth. This is some uh, handmade noodles. Freshly hand pulled. Daniel, you're, you're so northern, bro. I remember when we went to your house to eat jowzes once, and then you're like, yeah, I don't even really eat rice at home. Bro. The rice maybe it's eaten like once a week. We got the winter melon. Why do people like winter melon? It doesn't really have a lot of flavor. To me, I think it's the texture I like. I love the name of winter melon. It's Donghua. Yeah. Just so simply, literal translation is winter melon. My dumplings are floating. <laughs> Dumpling's good. Hey, Beijing hot pot. Man. It's a Beijing hot pot. If you guys know the general hot pot rules are generally starches go later, roots go earlier, seafood would also theoretically go later because the starches and the seafood would change the broth. And you need the roots actually, like had we got lotus root, takes super long to cook, right? Yeah. The small hat style hot pot is due to the, uh, the speed. It does cook a little faster due to more cooking surface area. Aren't you guys, hopefully that was useful in introducing Beijing hot pot. Like we said, there's so many different styles, but Beijing hot pot has got to be one of the oldest. Do you consider the Mongolian version older? I think hot pot itself is a very Mongolian uh, tradition mm -hmm. that I think once it entered China, it became localized in different regions. Yeah. There was a Jin dynasty, and these people were northern fighters that are not necessarily Han, but they kind of became Han, mm -hmm. but they're not Han. They're like Siberian Asians, basically, right. that took over China. Mm -hmm. And then they fought the Mongolians for 23 years. And while they were fighting in that 23 years, the Mongolians were eating hot pot. And then the Mongolians won, and then it became the Mongolian dynasty. Uh, How come so many non-Han groups have ruled over China? Three distinct ones. One is, I think, Jin. We're talking about Jin Chao, right? And there's also Yuan Chao, which is the Mongolians, right? And then you have the last one, which is the Qing dynasty. Which Manchurians. The Manchurians, exactly. Right, but and they're all kind of these uh, really strong fighter groups from the north right they're very good at war yeah mm -hmm. but they're not as good at like maybe like civilization and arts and infrastructure like right? where do you start the definition for Han people you draw all the way back to the Han dynasty like I think genetically people have changed over the time as well I think there's so much history wrapped up in the food and that's why I love having you as our Beijing plug and our food expert I think you're really good at drawing in the anthropological, you know, cultural thing. I think there's so much history behind food, especially when you talk about Chinese food that has been around for, maybe in it, the first iteration has been around for hundreds to thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Clearly the people who came up with this concept of this restaurant, they understand history. It's almost like everybody in China understands a lot of history through food. Would you say that's why when you talk to like a lot of like working class Chinese people who maybe have not, who didn't go through a lot of formal education, they still understand a lot about the history or even just the food itself. To understand it, you have to somewhat understand history. I mean, this is very macro, big historical talk. This is what I love. Very uh, Bourdain, RIP, shout out to Anthony Bourdain. On just a micro food enjoyment level, yeah. is this your favorite style? Personally, for me, I think the uh, the clear broth, which is just water, ginger, some seaweed, some onions, that's, I think, the best type hey, of hot pot. Hey, I'm with you there. If you made me pick super sauced up broth or clear broth, I'd pick clear. There's a beauty in the clear broth, and I, I feel like that we didn't really appreciate that as much until we got older. So you're going with the clear broth as your base. What is it, just lamb? I think hot pot is only meant for lamb, to be honest. I think beef. Wow. <laughs> Daniel's speaking like a, a true Chinese man.